The exercise in this video is a standing hip flexor stretch, so designed to target this front part of your hip. More than likely you also feel it in the quadriceps, and because we'll add some specific chest lifting and rib cage lifting, as well as an arm up and off the body movement, you may well feel it as a deep abdominal and rib stretch. So pretty much most of the front line of the body is targeted in this version. The only equipment you need is a table or similar, it might be a high bench, it might be a railing somewhere. Um, it needs to be stable, which is why we've got it up against a wall, sturdy, so not flimsy, and immovable. Okay? Um, this table is roughly at my pelvic height. Uh, that's kind of a mid height in terms of intensity. The higher the table, the more intense it will be, the lower, the less intense. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. So one foot is on the floor. Ideally, we're going to have ourselves positioned at least at the very end of the stretch with the heel down, so not up off onto the ball of the foot. And the other foot, or the other leg, you're going to come up and place the foot on the table as such. Now, this has got quite a sharp edge, so I've put a hand towel there so it's very comfortable. My two feet are at least hip width apart. Talk about that more in a moment. Now, square the hips up, because we know one of the ways to avoid a hip flexor stretch in a lunge position is to have the hips non-square. So we square the hips up. Start with the back knee a little bit bent and then slowly move your hips, in fact your whole body, forward towards the table. The hand position is you're going to put one hand here, the other hand on top, lift the chest, lift the ribs, pull yourself a little bit further towards the table. I've still got the back knee a bit bent, the standing legs knee I mean. Then I'm going to deliberately press that straight, and for me that starts to pull on a quadriceps stretch and increases the intensity of the hip flexor stretch. And then, big breath in, lift the chest again, lift the ribs, and picture yourself hanging off your arms. That's really important because what you don't want to do is engage the back muscles to lean you back. Rather, you are hanging off your arms. It feels completely different. Hang off the arms, don't engage the back muscles. If you want to, you can open the jaw, which is a bit hard for me to do and talk at the same time, and take the head and neck back as well. Now, I love that because I typically hold hips in the throat, so that's also stretching through there. Breathe and relax. Every now and then, just slightly bend the standing legs knee, pull yourself a bit closer to the table, press that knee straight again, lift the chest, lift the ribs, Lean back or hang back off those arms. Breathe deeply. Okay, the top hand, which is the hand of the leg that's on the floor, now we're reaching it up, we're actively reaching it off the body, and then you can take it back as far as you want. And that's how you involve the ribs and the abdominal muscles. Breathe. To come out, if you need to, you can help the head up and come through. All right, so for me today, very, very powerful stretch here only, little bit in the quads. All right, I'm gonna do the other side, but not just to demonstrate the exercise a second time, I wanna to point to a number of key features of this exercise, but which are also applicable to a large number of stretches in the stretch therapy system. In the initial position, in fact, throughout the whole exercise, I've got my foot on the ground, fully flat, and I've got some of the sole of this foot also in contact with something. What we have noticed is that stretching the hip flexors, or indeed the whole front line of the body, quads, hip flexors, deep abdominals, with one or more of the soles of the feet in contact with something seems to enhance the effect in terms of what the brain thinks about how much tension I should or shouldn't be holding in this part of the body. It's very likely due to, due to proprioceptive feedback from the tissues on the base of your feet. Okay, So I'll contrast it to, well, there's an exercise called the Thomas test where you're lying on your back, usually on a massage table, and someone else comes along and tries to push the 
the hanging leg down, but neither of your feet are in contact with the floor or anything. And we have found that whilst you might get a good stretch at the time, it doesn't seem to carry over to increasing your range of movement in the exercise, whereas this version does. I made a very clear point about my two feet were at least hip width apart. Any time you minimise the base of support, so in this case, if I were to have my feet in line, it's a narrower base of support, it's much more difficult to stabilise yourself. Similarly, if I was up on the ball of the foot versus this back foot being flat, I'm having to stabilise myself. And so then the, body ha the brain has to attend to stopping you from falling over, which makes it much more difficult to relax the whole system, but more particularly relax the part that you're trying to target in the particular exercise. So make yourself stable. The third aspect of this exercise is, say in contrast to doing a standing hip flexor stretch here, in this position you'll note that my knee is not even at 90 degrees. There's not even a 90 degree angle at the hip joint here. In this version, even while my knee angle is bent 90 degrees, now my hip angle here is quite closed up. What that does is it brings some tension into the hamstring muscles and what that is doing is helping you keep the tail tucked, which is the key aspect of any hip flexor stretch. Of all the parts of the body that we try to stretch, we are expert at cheating, trying to avoid the hip flexor sensation because it's intense. Most of us are very tight in that line through our body. So this position where these muscles are under some tension is already doing the tail tucking action, this action, keeping the tail tucked under. And the effect there is that when the leg is being taken back behind the body, it actually is the hip extending and not your spine bending backwards. Okay? So those three aspects, very important. One or more of the soles of the feet on the floor or on something, in contact with something. Stability, so wide base of support. And the fact that we've got this leg raised on a semi-high support gives us some tension here to aid the tail tuck. Okay? So give that one a go and let us know how it works for you.